All right, in our previous video, we learned how to create a tessellation out of a rectangle. In this one, we're going to look at how to create a tessellation out of a regular triangle. <clears throat> so if you're using your computer, which I encourage you to do to create your shape, what I want you to do is open up a PowerPoint file or a paint file or you know some other file that you can actually draw stuff. And what we want to do is, is insert a regular triangle. Problem is, on PowerPoint, they, there really isn't a regular triangle button. That triangle right there is actually formed from using the, the isosceles triangle shape. All right, so since we can't, I mean, it's kind of tricky to make, you know, to measure all these sides and angles and stuff like that. So make it, make it really easy on yourself. Go to the internet and search for regular triangle. All right, you find one. You go back to your PowerPoint and you just copy and paste it right in there. All right, that triangle's regular. To test that, of course, we want to use a protractor. So I go to, again, my internet and I just type in protractor and a protractor pops up. I'm going to send that to the back so I can use it to measure my triangle. I'm also going to make it a little bit smaller. <coughs> Kind of like using using your resources here to measure this these angles, right? So I know in in a regular triangle all the angles have to be the same, which is 60 degrees. So if I if I set up my my little vertex right here or my little dot right there on the vertex, you can see that the angle is 60 degrees. Check the other angle. Dot on the vertex, 60 degrees. It's perfect. All right, so I'm going to get rid of that protractor. All right, so once we have a regular triangle, now you want to change one of the sides. So you take your little scribble tool, right, and you hold down your mouse, and you just want to change this side. Change it in a very unique way. All right, again, I'll caution you like I did in the previous video. Don't make it too drastic, especially at the ends. Like, I wouldn't make it really crazy like this. All right, make it, you know, you don't have to make it as sort of like a nice curve like this. You can you can do it where there are angles involved, but don't don't make it too drastic. Because remember, you're gonna have to cut this out and trace it a ton of times over a pretty big poster. All right, so once you have that once you have that uh, changed, click on it, click on that shape, and you're gonna copy it and you're gonna paste it. And then you're going to rotate it so it changes the side that is next to it. So you're going to rotate that so the corners line up. So it looks something like this. And again, the precision here is, is really, really important. If you're not super precise at this step, the rest of it's just not going to look okay. It's not going to work. There are going to be overlaps and gaps and things like that. So we want to be super, super careful. Oop, let me undo that. We want to be really careful that, that this is exactly the way we want it. Uh, it looks pretty good. It's not exactly perfect. So I'm going to take a few extra seconds here and make sure that is perfect. That looks, looks a little bit better. I might just twist it a little bit more and move it up again. So you can see the painstaking detail that I'm going through. That looks really good. <clears throat> so I want you to, you know, make sure that you're precise as well. All right, next step. Take this bottom segment, this bottom side, and, and find the middle of it. Easiest way to do that is to drop an altitude from the top. So what I did there was I just drew a, uh, I inserted a straight line. Right? And that's gonna give that's gonna help me find my midpoint because I want to bisect the bottom segment. And that looks pretty good. Once it's up here and exactly in the apex, then that means we found the midpoint down here. Alright, go back to your squiggly and you're gonna change, you're gonna alter half of the bottom here. Again, don't be too crazy towards the ends. If you want to get really crazy, do it towards the middle. 
and I changed half of the bottom segment. Now I'm going to click on that and of course I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it. Control C, Control V and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and just slide it into position over here. Just like that. Alright, now I'm ready to get rid of my triangle. I'm done with that and I'm done with this segment as well. So what I'm left with is a shape that will tessellate. All right. Now your sh your uh, stencil, sh you know, you shouldn't start with anything that's bigger than a 20 square inch stencil. All right. So this one, if I were to print it out, which would be my next step, you go to you, you just press print and you print this out on a regular piece of paper. Uh, make sure that the triangle that you started with wasn't, you know, the area isn't too big. It can't be bigger than 20, 20 square inches. All right. But what I'm left with here is a nice stencil, right? So I print this out, I cut it out, and I trace it onto a piece of like manila folder or cardstock or something and that shape right there will be my stencil. So I cut it out of the cardstock and I, I want to repeat that, that uh, shape over and over and over again on, on a big poster. Your poster has to be 18 by 24. Alright, so what I'm going to do is show you just very, very quickly um, how to kind of tessellate a triangle. It's a little bit different than a rectangle. Rectangles you just kind of slide them over and it's just a bunch of translations. But for, for triangles there's rotation involved. So so this is kind of like what you would do physically with a paper and pencil. You would, you would stencil this out and you would trace this guy. and He's going to fit up in right into here. Alright, and you'll draw it perfectly so there are no overlaps and no gaps. Believe it or not, it's actually a little bit harder to do on a computer. So that looks pretty good. It's a little bit off, so I'll you know, try to fix it here. Alright, but what I'm trying to do here is create a nice tessellation so there are no gaps and no overlaps. And you just kind of keep retracing it, you know, and just copying it over and over and over, and just put it into place. Right, it should lock into place really nicely. If it doesn't, that means we kind of made a, we weren't super precise in one of our previous steps. All right, and this will, of course, just continue around, around and around, and then everything will lock into place really nicely. That one looks really good. I'll do one or two more here. That looks okay. And last one. You can see that everything is fitting in perfectly. Everything is locking into place really nicely. All right, and once you have like that that section finished, right? Then you're going to want to think about all right. I need to expand the whole poster, so I need to continue down this way. So what you'll do is you'll rotate one like this. All right, and the next one will fit will fit over here. Right, and so on and so forth. So everything kind of locks into place. All right, and you would continue this. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you would continue this over the entire poster. To get a better idea of what a full tessellation looks like, uh, you can check out my previous video about the Pegasus. All right, <clears throat> so those are the steps for a regular triangle. All right, you're, again, your poster has to be 18 by 24, and your stencil can't start off bigger than an area of 20 square inches. So let's look at the steps. Right, these are the steps to create a tessellation out of a regular triangle. This is what I just went through. So what I want you to do here is pause this video at this point and write these steps down if you're interested. Alright, again in the other video I had 
I had a, uh, had a tessellated rectangle. This one was all about regular triangles. So good luck.